on today's episode of the AMA Drone Report. ANAFI FPV puts you in the cockpit of Paris Revolutionary Drone. The EAA submits comments to the FAA on Amazon's petition. And the DOT delays NPRM on remote ID of UAVs. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. The ANAFI FPV drone from Parrots puts the operator in the cockpit of Parrots' new ultra-portable UAV. The aircraft delivers live immersive video from its 180-degree tilting camera to the included cockpit glasses. Parrot says that the ANAFI FPV boasts in-depth manual controls for piloting and imaging, 4K HDR video, and 21 megapixel images, easy-to-use modes and presets, portability, long battery life, and on-the-go USB-C charging. The FPV experience is undertaken by pairing a smartphone to the ANAFI FPV with the free Light 6.6 app, placing the phone in the included cockpit glasses, placing them on your head and taking flight. The brand new FPV interface in Freelight 6.6 is a sample streamlined heads-up display with an immersive unobstructed view of your aerial acrobatics. Any safety alerts or geofencing limits are automatically highlighted in your field of view. Two new flight presets join ANAFI's exciting menu of options. Available in Free Flight 6.6, the new additions allow ANAFI FPV pilots to expand their creativity via a touch screen. The ANAFI FPV All-in-One Pack retails at $799. In the next Drone Minute, we'll be taking a quick look at some news making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. A group of activists calling themselves Heathrow Paws is threatening to shut down Heathrow Airport Friday morning by flying UAVs within the mandated exclusion zone. The group is protesting Heathrow's plans for a third runway to be built, which they believe will contribute to the current ecological crisis. Police in the area said anyone taking part in the protest Friday morning can expect to be arrested. In an event held Monday at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., Flirty unveiled its advanced drone delivery technology aircraft, dubbed Flirty Eagle. The company also released a much-anticipated first video of its drone performing consumer and automated external defibrillator deliveries to customer homes. Flirty's system is designed to safely get packages to customers with the delivery goal of less than 10 minutes. Aero News Network is monitoring social media reports stating two people have been imprisoned by the Iranian government for flying a drone. A Twitter feed from at Korea Zarati states, A source told me the Australian couple imprisoned in Iran, Jolie King and Mark Firkin, have been in Evan prison since July 2019 for flying a drone near the capital city, Tehran. The family says this was a misunderstanding and Jolie King and her fiancé, Mark Firkin, were unaware of the Iranian law, which bans drone flights without a license. We'll keep an eye out for further details. Two people were arrested after they allegedly flew a drone over Michigan University's football stadium during a game on Saturday. The drone was initially spotted by a fan attending the game, and the two were contacted and arrested shortly after. In addition to federal issues with flight overpopulations, the University of Michigan has a policy which states unsafe or unauthorized drone flights by anyone on the campus carries criminal and or civil penalties. Now back to the rest of the news. Safety for manned aircraft, not commercial expediency, must be the priority for federal air regulators as they consider an exemption application by Amazon regarding package deliveries by UAS, noted the EAA in formal comments to the FAA. The EAA made comments in response to Amazon's petition to the FAA that requested relief from certain rules in order to conduct deliveries by UAS. 
The exemption would allow Amazon additional freedom to operate below 400 feet above ground level without the line of sight observation requirements for UAS operations. In addition to reaffirming EAA's long-standing position on UAS integration, the organization's comments give specific examples of various types of flying that takes place on a regular basis below 400 feet AGL. Those operations include ultralight vehicles, private airports, and helipads, emergency medical flight operations, backcountry flying, seaplanes, and flights over open water or sparsely populated areas. This affirms the need for extremely reliable sense and avoid technology aboard unmanned systems that can detect any manned aircraft. The DOT has delayed the publication of an NPRM concerning remote identification of UAVs until December 20th this year, with the comment period open through February 1st of 2020. The rulemaking project was initiated back in February of 2018 and would implement systems for remote identification of certain unmanned aircraft systems. This would further address security and law enforcement concerns regarding the further integration of these aircraft into the national airspace, while also enabling greater operational capabilities by these same aircraft. The delay was met with disappointment by AUVSI, and Association President and CEO Brian Wynn stated, The need for remote identification cannot be overstated. Remote ID is necessary for enabling advanced and expanded operations, such as flight over people and beyond line of sight, which will provide significant benefits throughout our economy and society. And that wraps up this week's AMA Drone Report. Don't forget to subscribe and to please check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more information on the exciting hobby drone world, just head over to monoaircraft.org. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow to wrap up our week with an episode of Airborne Unlimited.